feel a real bug. Hands in the sky, be let it up. Yeah, I feel a real bug. I'm feeling like Kobe, the way that they hold me. Taking a shot, but they jumping right on me. Doubt in my dreams, but I swear they don't know me. Question my life, got me feeling like OJ. Feeling like OJ. I swear I didn't do it. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Dow Tron. This is my boy Tyree. How y'all doing? And uh, today we got a special topic about basically fitting in. I was hitting up Tyree uh, a couple days ago and he was talking about what we wanted to talk about. We had another subject in mind, but he hit me up today and was like, he told me that he wanted to talk about fitting in and yes, sir. where you like finding your place in the world and things like that. So yeah. we'll let Tyree get into his backstory. Yeah, yeah. So um, how y'all doing? Uh, it's, it's nice to be on the Nice to be on the podcast, on the show. Um, and, uh, you know, I grew up uh, in uh, New Jersey. Um, did a little time in Colorado and so forth. Um, and, like, it's like this, all, this constant struggle I've always had with identity. And this constant struggle that I've always had with um, using art to really be my identity. Um, and so, like, I kind of started off with always been interested in photography, always been interested and poetry, always been interested in spoken word, always been interested in editing, graphic design. Um, always wanted to dance, but just didn't know how to until I <laughs> learned in Colorado. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but I, I grew up in the foster care system for um, a little bit of time. Um, and there's these things I struggle with, like, you know, um, a father, even though I was adopted by a man who was a pastor, who is a pastor um, and who is a, a great father, I still struggled with knowing now that I'm 23 and that I was never fathered beforehand or that I was never fathered the way I wanted to be when I was adopted or, or in a foster home. Um, and some of the things like that I really had a hard time with was it, not rejection or anything, but just really, who am I? Um, and am I okay with showing who I am when I do figure it out? You know, always feeling like I don't necessarily fit in, um, always feeling like a misfit, um, struggling with loneliness and so is that is that's something like you um like discovered recently or is something that's always been a constant like thread in your life like well i say with the loneliness and the identity pieces you know put together loneliness has always been a i remember bringing it up to my father um like i was a sophomore in high school and i was like hey like I was like, I never been lonely before, or yeah. I noticed that I was lonely. I mean, at this age, like I'm con, you're a sophomore in high school, you yeah, consciously yeah. know what you're feeling. In middle school, you don't. You like, you don't really know what hormones are really, unless you know you get involved with stuff in the early age, you know. And um, loneliness is one of those things I didn't, I never really experienced, you know, um, consciously. And I said to him, I said, Hey, pops, I think I'm lonely. Um, and uh, I don't know if I did a terrible job explaining it or what. His reply was, you know, not that it was a bad response, but he said, he said, I don't think you're lonely you said i just think that you know you still be around family a little more and um i don't think you're lonely though like i wouldn't know if you're lonely you know but i was lonely i was very lonely mm -hmm. um and when thinking back on it the, re the reality is like i was actually lonely you know thinking about elementary school um all the way up to middle school through high school and then leaving to join for the military in colorado it's always been the same feeling of loneliness and just wanting to have somebody to say you know really honestly just seeking validation from from parents because i've never really lived in a stable home so that loneliness was i just want family you know and you know and you know of course that turned into negative things like i would try to be in relationships with women um and try to find that validity you know yeah yeah so i, I can definitely see that like that's something i remember growing growing up in school like i remember we used to live in georgia and we moved to jersey like well, I was born here, but we mm -hmm. spent a lot of time in Georgia beforehand. And then I remember going to school, and people asking me, "Say, you live with your mom, but you live with your dad?" And I was like, <laughs> I, was I was like, I live with yeah. both my parents. Why would yeah. I live separately? Right. But a lot of people yeah, grew yeah. up in like single parent homes. A lot of yeah. times, it's just the mom and the and the children. So I could see where I think a lot of times that loneliness is sometimes it's subconscious. Like it's yeah, like a hole, yeah. a hole in your heart. Yeah. Yep. And then like you talking about, I know we're talking about fitting in, but like. I think fi that's why family, like a lot of people feel family is under attack. I feel like it too, because mm. you can see it. Like family is a, a, a big deal when it comes to raising a child to become an adult, because a lot of 
things a lot of things can be happened to that child like that has them basically they coming into the world broken already right, right. But as soon as they come into the world the, the father and the mother's not there like they come in at a disadvantage from the beginning yeah and yeah is, and i mean in life we all got obstacles we got to overcome different things but right that that family structure really help you become the person like woman or man who you're supposed to be right at the right. end of the day which, which is god's plan at the end of the day yeah and so, that family stuff like it really shows you like how important how important that not only is the structure really important but just the substance that you get inside the the community of family like coming home and like me and the family had a discussion my, my my mother and my father and you know they brought some things to my attention mm -hmm. and it was embarrassing because I was never corrected in this area or at least that I could remember um and you know just to be really shallow about it and talking about it like one of the things I was brought up was that I'm really anti-social or that I don't speak up enough or that I don't interact with family enough and for me it was kind of like wait hold on I came home mm -hmm. you know to see family and to have relationship, to be relational. Um, and you know, there were some other flaws they pointed out and they, and they said it all out of love, but it was embarrassing because you know, you find out that you're an adult, you're a grown man, and you have these things that should have been corrected um, in the community of family years ago yeah, and yeah. back in middle school, back in elementary exactly. school, back in high school, you know? And it was just kind of like, man, like, oh, like my life sucks. Like, I feel like my life sucks. And you're almost being, beginning to feel like a loser. And that's when those feelings of um, of not fitting in really begins to settle into me. Like, that's when it really started settling in. Like, it was kind of like, yo, like, you don't have a right with your parents. Like, mm -hmm. that's embarrassing. Like, you know, but you know what I'm saying? You do the music, you know, and you do the poetry and you do the photography and the directing. But you don't even know your family. Like, like you now you really don't fit in, Tyree. Now you really <laughs> don't fit in because you ain't even really family to your family. Yeah. You know, you don't treat your family like family. Yeah, you suck, you know. Yeah, yeah. And that's when those things really start to come in. But, you know, through it all, you know, I really I really do press, you know, I pressed to find my identity and know who I really was, you know. Yeah. So do you think, like, I guess, like, sometimes, you, I guess those type of struggles you got to really prey on because, like, in one sense, not having your, your father or your, I guess, your biological family. Yeah. And you have an, a new family. And one says it can be a blessing. Now, mm -hmm. in some foster care situations, like, they just go from one worse situation to another worse situation. Right, right, right. And it's like, you got to try to, it's like, some of those kids that become successful, I'm like, like man, how did, how did they do it? But <laughs> <laughs> Right. But do you, do you feel like where you are now is a blessing to have that family structure at least? Absolutely. I, like trying to see the silver lining to play, you know, devil's advocate yeah. at least. You know, I can, I guess I could start off by saying like one of my caseworkers, her name is, I call her Miss Tony. Um, and uh, she told me that I turned out well, you know, for a foster kid. Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean by that? And, you know, I ended up doing my research online and seeing how foster kids turn out and the traits they have, you know, and I'm not all the way there, but looking at the things that, you know, see how they turn out with jobs and how they turn out with their work ethic and emotionally scarred how they become, uh, you know, physical abuse, verbal abuse they turn into, the, the drug abuse they turn to. Um, she told me that I turned out really well. Um, so I would definitely say that the environment that I have inside the family and, and where, I, where I was and where I am today, it all turned out for the better. Um, could I have done some things right? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, could the family do some things right? Absolutely. Are y'all flawed? Absolutely. But I can definitely say that I've not once have I ever had the struggle, the problem with what is the quality of this family for me. Never, ever had that struggle. And I was never, ever even a question. And, you know, the question was always simply, you know, how am I supposed to be a son? I didn't know how to be a son. Yeah, yeah. You know, especially in foster care. And that's still a question to me. You know, how do I be a son? Is that the wrong question? I don't know. You know, but what I am learning is, you know, I'm first, you know, be who God called me to be and hopefully, you know, showing honor to your, my parents, showing honor to your parents, you know, that sonship, you know, and that fatherhood and, you know, just being a child, um, not only in the kingdom, but a child in the home, you know, it'll start to look right, you know. How how, do, how were you when you, when I got adopted? 
Um, I'm, well, first of all, I went through several families. I went okay. through several families, um, and I was I had just graduated fifth grade. It was fifth grade in the summer, and uh, you know social services came in, and you know what they did, they did, and um, I would say I was going into the sixth grade. Don't know what age I was. I'm not gonna try to do math. I'm terrible <laughs> at math, but I was going into the sixth grade. Let's take that for age, um, and uh, I went through three families went to three families and I was on my way to an orphanage and uh, I got kicked out of one of the homes um, by the actual the owner of the home you know um, that's all I love you know um, and you know, my pastor first lady decided you know hey let's take so them did you knew them beforehand or they just my pastors the yeah. yeah oh yeah yeah I already I was already attending trying for life church oh, okay um so um I guess they saw it as an opportunity to go, you know what? And he needs a second chance or, you know, he could use a father or, you know, let's, let's help him out, you know? And so there's discussion and then they, they, we went through their classes in the foster care system, putting up with the nonsense of, of me. <laughs> um, that's and, a lot. Uh, you take on a whole, uh, other, whole other child that's already right, grown. <laughs> right. And it doesn't make it easy for my identity at <laughs> yeah, all, actually. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, like I had a really... Now I realize, like really thinking about it, they've never raised, at the time they had never raised a teenager and I was a teenager at the time. So for them it was like, holy, holy mackerel, like, wait, we never did this before. Yeah, yeah. Like Just we've been right teens, right? <laughs> like it was like raising from two all the way up to, to 10, to 10, to 15, to 18, to 12. No, it was like, okay, all right, this guy's a teenager. <laughs> We were as a teenager, like that was it, and there was no personal relationship. Even though I went to the church, yeah. there was no personal relationship. Yeah. So it was kind of just like, hey, like, you know, <laughs> here's your bed, right? <laughs> you know, and you know, there were some changes they made. Yeah, yeah. You know, like changes they made, like oh, you can't dress like this, or, and you know, those things offended me. You know, especially being, you know, me feel, always feeling like I'm a misfit. So everything I did from being a misfit all the way up to just feeling different or not feeling different like uh, even the way I dressed like back then color jeans were the thing so <laughs> you know I had like a pair of red jeans or pants <laughs> with a bright yellow and a green sky blue and I would wear like three belts at a time like a rock star I had a mohawk I had the spiky bracelets wow. you know? was I was like really mid, doing it like <laughs> right party you know like <laughs> so you know those things for them that, that wasn't and their family that and and probably for really a lot of a lot of masculinity and re looking back on photos that really actually was the best thing they could have done for me is <laughs> told me no to those styles yeah. tell me no because those type of styles develop a mentality a very unhealthy mentality you know especially for a young person who, who really doesn't know that stuff really does take really does matter you know it takes a toll on how it's you it's funny think. how uh, you think like when you're a kid you don't see it like yeah he's like your parents tell you not to do something to in your mind they just telling you not to do it because they don't like me or right. they don't want me to do that bro. right there's always a reason behind it yeah there's <laughs> always see a it reason you get older right you know one of the things i really hated that they did um which i definitely do all them for now is we i had this curfew with my cell phone um 10 o'clock every night i had to put up my cell phone and um i, I hated that i think it started off at nine o'clock you know but nevertheless 10 o'clock i had to put up my cell phone um, when i got a certain age um, and uh, I didn't like that. So when, when I could work a job, I got hired. <laughs> I worked for U.S. Polo, and then I worked a Puma job, and then I worked a McDonald's job. And I thought, you know, hey, I make my own money. Even though I live in their own house, yeah. live in their house, I don't live in my own house. You know, I could have paid my own cell, my own cell phone bill. How they can't tell me what to do? I'm yeah. independent. You know, <laughs> I'm not though. I'm living in their house. You know, and that's a mentality. You know that I gained not being fathered, you know, because I had bad relationship with a lot of people in the family, not intentionally, but I didn't, I didn't know how to be, I didn't know how to have conversation. Yeah. I didn't know how to be, when they try to celebrate my birthday or try to correct me on my clothing or tell me to put my cell phone up, um, I get offended or angry or frustrated. Um, and I had, I had a lot of bad moments in my mind, I had a lot of bad mental moments, you know, but I didn't know how to take that kind of stuff. And, you know, you would say that a lot of teenagers didn't, but, you know, looking back on Facebook posts and pictures, like, like I wrote about that stuff on Facebook, 
and you could tell that like I was I became suicidal because of that stuff not because of what they told me but because I didn't know how to receive yeah, them telling me yeah. me being a son I didn't know how to re- I didn't know how to take being a son to somebody who I didn't give who didn't give birth to me yeah, yeah. you know so it was like oh you telling me to do stuff like I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna, you know what I'm saying like yeah. it was bad you know so yeah, yeah. I didn't know who I was so I didn't know how to accept anything they told me to do anything they told me to do I got offended, you know, and that ultimately led into a suicidal mindset. You no, know, and I really lost who I was, you know. Man, that's a lot. You know, and, and it is a lot. It is absolutely a lot, but there is no way, no way that I, I that I was the only teenager that ever went through that. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, leave to go to another job, and you know, when I become an, an, a young adult. And then it doesn't carry over. It still carried over. Those same things still carried over. Suicidal thoughts still carried over. Um, loneliness was the biggest struggle in my life so far. And loneliness. Constantly lonely. Not for a relationship. Marriage is my number one desire. Has always been my number one desire. Um, but the loneliness wasn't in that. The loneliness is in, was simply in just, I want family. Yeah. You know, I want brothers to lean on. I want sisters who I can hang out with. I want brothers I can hang out with. You know, I want a community of people where I could be like, yo, like, I'm weak today. Like, yeah, yeah. can you speak some life into me? Like, and be there physically. And I was, and I was in another state anyway, you know, because of my own bad decisions. So, uh, basically, how far are you along in your life as far as, you know, filling those voids? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I still have my moments and, you know, um, I'm not perfect at it or anything, but, like, I still have my triggers you know, I still have my moments where it's kind of just like, you know, like I still like even like before how I've how I've longed for it. And this is really how, how I'm doing, how I've doing, how I've been doing and how I am doing. Um, it's kind of just like back then, like I've longed to be fathered, you yeah, know. Yeah. And now it's like I still long to be fathered, but it's weird. It's awkward because at 23, yeah, you know, yeah. to say that, you know, like, hey, I'm 23. And I still want to be fathered. That's the funny thing about like men now, like and grown men. Yeah, they still have to deal with those basically daddy issues. Right. Like, <clears throat> it's something that it don't just go away. I'm a grown man now. I could take care of myself. Mm-hmm. But like I was saying earlier, like with the that foundation of family, like it just helps you grow to be a, a much better person that you could be without you know yeah someone there guiding you. And it's crazy how, like, a lot of these guys out here, man, the way they act, the way they treat people, the way they talk, how they treat women. Right. Like, the ones that's in and out of jail, getting in trouble all the time. Yeah. He, you, you talk to 90% of them, they, they no dad father. wasn't there. No father. <clears throat> no father. And, it, and I think, like, just hearing your story, like, I think it's a, it is a blessing that overall, like, that's how you gotta look at things. Sometimes you be like, "Oh, it's hard. I'm going struggling." Like, cause I do the same thing. I'm like, "Man, I can't, I can't deal with what I'm dealing with right, right now. Like, right. I just go away." But right. sometimes you gotta step out, and look, look at it in a broader, broader landscape, and see that like <clears throat> you really are blessed, <clears throat> and you could be far worse. Like some a lot, a lot of times, I just look at other people and I'm like, "Wow." They, they really going through it. Like, I can't really complain. Right. Why am I complaining right. about my right. situation? Absolutely. And this situation is 10 times worse than mine. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, definitely recognizing those situations. Like, like now things could be worse. It's kind of really just like, yes, I am blessed. Like, and even if I was in the worst situation yeah, yeah. or worse earth situation. Still. <laughs> still, I'm blessed, yeah. you know. Um, and being able to recognize that I, I am blessed and not as a cliche, but on a series, no, I'm blessed, you know, um, and learning to crawl underneath knowing that the, having that, that not just the head knowledge, but having the heart knowledge to know that I'm really blessed um, and taking that knowledge and really saying, you know what, I'm going to humble, I'm going to humble myself, you know, so that I can be fathered at 23 because it does require a certain humility and a certain humbleness, yeah, exactly. you know, at 23 to be able to say, hey, I want to be fathered. I'm going to put my pride aside. I'm a, I'm going to really be a, how do I be a son? You know, yeah, father me, teach me. Tell me when my stuff looks ugly and it stinks. Yeah. It takes a lot for a 23-year-old yeah, adult, <laughs> you know. Especially nowadays, like, you know, you got, you know, you basically the millennial uh, era now. Right. <laughs> like, you can't tell them nothing. Right, right, absolutely. I know everything. Right, you know everything, yeah, you know. basically. So I mean, most, yeah, I mean, like I, we all did the same thing when we were young. Like, 
<clears throat> like I said we, uh, before, like your parents telling you to do something, you want to know why, why I can't do this. And, like they're just trying to hold me back, but right. they always got, yeah. they always trying to tell you. <laughs> like that's what that's what we need. We need, <laughs> we need somebody to say, you know, you yeah. messing up right now. Right, need, right. Every now and then you need to smack up the side right. of the head or kick in the pants or whatever. Absolutely, yep. <laughs> yeah, you know what? No one, and it's kind of hard to even sometimes even realize when you're in your pride. Or when you need that smack in the head. Yeah. Or when you need somebody to say, oh, you're messing up. Yeah. Like, you really just need to, like, re-examine yourself. And just be honest with yourself. Like, are you really screwing up right now? And if yeah. you're screwing up, it's okay. But what's not okay is if you're screwing up and you don't see it and you don't want to fix it. That's a problem. You know? And that was an issue for me. You know? I was like, oh, you know what? They say I'm, somebody say I'm screwing up. Like, nah, nah, I'm good. I got it. You yeah. know? And that's that pride. That's not, that's, the, that's me not understanding that they've been there. You know, or even with friendships, like friends telling me like, yo, you could do better with the business. I'm like, oh, I got it. I got it. You know, and that's that's my pride kicking in, you yeah. know, because at 23, like I said, it requires a certain amount of being humble, really just being like, like, I right, thank you for being a friend, you know, because, yeah, yeah. you know, I don't I don't know. Like, I never really yeah. been around a stable environment to know that friendships are family and that family requires a level of friendship. Um, and just a community of people to say, hey, man, you stink right now. Like, yeah, yeah. let's get it together. You know, I didn't, I didn't know how to take it. How, but. how, well, speaking of friends, like, how is that, like, you know, going through, you know, three different foster families? How is that going through, like, you know, being in school I and mean, you're, you're being young and dealing with, like, new people and friends and stuff like that? Um, um, I, I, the best, the best example I can give is, I remember I had a roommate in the military and, uh, <laughs> I don't talk bad about anybody. <laughs> but some people just have really bad hygiene practices. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> well, there's always the one kid in school. Right? <laughs> They're like, ooh, man. Right. You don't say nothing or you just make fun of them. Right. <laughs> you, right. And, and, you know, I decided, you know what? It's bothering me. I'll be a friend. Oh We're not really friends, but I'll be a friend. <laughs> Let's let this be a friend moment, you know. Because if I stink, I want somebody to tell me as yeah. opposed to, just let you walk around sick. smelling bad or you know uh, you know whatever and uh he's an he was an associate you know and really turned out to almost be like i don't call people enemies you know because scripture says you wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principality spiritual weakness high places so he's not an enemy but he's being used by the enemy um to cause some distraction in my life at work and making work harder but nevertheless um it didn't go too well, you know. <laughs> but inside my main circle of people, you know, like even with a, a few close friends recently, um, had not a fallout, you know, but some disagreements. Yeah. Um, and I'm reading this book now on friendships where it says like it's, it's giving me instruction on like it's this chapter in the book that says have tough conversations with your friends. Yeah. And I was like, yo, like that's really complex but very simple, yeah, you know, yeah. like that's very imperative. Like, I really do need to have yeah, tough conversations. It makes sense. It makes sense. You know, because then you really get to see where your friendship really is. Exactly. And exactly. can you work it out? Because I don't want to be 30 and have a problem, have my best friend have an issue with something my wife said. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, I'll talk to my wife like that. <laughs> like, no, you should have been able to have conversations yeah. like that. You know, should've you don't want to have it when you're married. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, that's embarrassing. And two is like, it's almost like your friendship is just coming out of the childlike stage when you just begin to have those conversations. So I'm glad I had those conversations and that we had those disagreements because now then it becomes, you I need to learn how to love people better. And the same thing with, you know, vice versa with the other person, you yeah. know. Hey, let's learn to love better. Like, Scripture says to love. Like, you know what? Man, that's love, you know. And it's hard to love like that when you don't know who you are, yeah. you know. And thank God I know who I am now, you know. But, you know, imagine that's, the men who don't. Yeah, people like sometimes sometimes you might even lose a friend because right. you get to a you get to a difficult conversation and you go, right. like, yo, what are you, what are you doing? Like right. you're not coming to them like if you're coming <laughs> to them in the love, you're not trying to bash them over the head right. or something. Just talk <clears throat> Yeah, you're just trying to talk to them and they get super offensive. You're right. like, okay, there's there's a deep another problem with Right. Them, right? It's more than it's, just the conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's something deeper. And for me it was kinda just like like dag, like it's not it's not really the conversation. It's really what's happening right now. Yeah, yeah. It's a spirit of offense, and I'm offended right now. Yeah. And really, the closer, the closer you are, 
the more opportunity, the more open you are for offense. And that's what any relationship, you know, because you're closer to my heart. And when you're closer to my heart, I'm more vulnerable to be offended. And f- offense is going to happen. Yeah, offense yeah. is absolutely going to happen. The The key is when offense happens, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. You know, you got to look at what the you. I think a lot of times, well, to, to me, it's like the era of offense right now. Like <laughs> you can't say anything. Everybody get offended. It's, a, it's a group somewhere <laughs> on Twitter yeah. or Tumblr or Facebook ready to lash right. out with the torches and come for you. So Right. <clears throat> I think people, like, you got to have the conversations, like you said, like, whether you, like, whether y'all friends or not, really, especially now going on in this country, the conversations yeah. you got to have, and then you got to be able to hash out everything. Then you got to put the truth in there, like, right. okay, is this what this person's saying true or not? Right. And then you move on from there. Like, yeah. this is kind of crazy world we're living in right now. I keep seeing the stuff I'm seeing, but... I don't know how we got onto that, but no, no, you good. <laughs> but but you know what though, it's kind of just like it really is like, and it's easy to be offended when it's like either you not not really solidified and kind of who you are because everything just becomes like like for me this is how it was for me no lie it was really like oh we disagree okay <laughs> like. Now I really don't fit in. Yeah, yeah. It's like, wait, hold you on. How'd you take the, that? Yeah. Like, how'd you, Tyree, how'd you take that? Like, <laughs> wait, you had this agreement, and now all of a sudden you don't fit in? Wait, you, re- bro, you really need to find out who you are, Tyree. Like, look in the mirror and really evaluate yourself. That wasn't the conversation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we could be talking about Skittles, and whether it's pork and Skittles or not, whether it's on a label or not, whether they lying about the label or not. And then it's like, and that wasn't the conversation. You know? <laughs> but we can talk about something small like ingredients inside, candy or something. And then we disagree. And then I'm like, man, I'm, and, and I leave your car or I leave the, the, the environment we were in talking to or the room or whatever. I leave the setting. And then I'm like, I'm in my quiet time. I'm like, yo, like, all right, man, then nobody understand me, man. <laughs> like, how'd that happen? Like, it was just about Skittles. <laughs> and it turned exactly. into, I don't fit in. That's what no, you got to do. No, who you are. Yeah, that's, that's sign of maturity, though. You can look back and look, okay, I wasn't all the way right. right. I wasn't right at all in that situation. <laughs> he wasn't like, there, I wasn't there mentally, <laughs> yeah, you like, know, so. That's what you know. they all get. Like, I, I, I always, I'm like, for me, a lot of times I'm slow to offend. And you have to really, like, really dig the knife into a family for yeah. different ways, but I, I definitely understand where you come from. But, um, like, with friends, like, <clears throat> like, growing up in school, like, I remember, like, I'm, I'm, di- I'm a, I'm kind of understand where you're coming from. My situation is different. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know, I have my, my parents, but for me, my situation is different because I grew up in church mm-hmm. and being a church kid, That's good. being That's like good. in church, you can be one way, mm-hmm. but when you in school, you got to be yep. a different way. Mm-hmm. So you, you know, you hop in the fence on both sides every mm-hmm. now and then. Like, so I, I was yeah. already kind of, you know, kind of an outcast. The only thing that probably helped me is probably my sense of humor. Like, you know, I, I could defend myself verbally because they definitely would come <laughs> after me. Like, they make fun of my clothes. Yeah. Like, they didn't make fun of my looks so much. They would just make fun of my clothes. You know, everybody had, you know, I remember coming in first day of school one year and everybody sitting. I had, I came in later than everybody. So I'm, I walk in the classroom, everybody's in there. I was like, oh boy, I'm already kind of shy anyway. So I walk in there, everybody looks at me, then they look at your feet. <laughs> and they're just like, all the smirks, I got some beat up feet lies on, but right. like, it's I've just like, try, it's like, now to this day, I, you know, I care about the way I dress and wear. I'm like, I, I'm, clothes have never been a big thing for me, but right. I, I do like, you know, like to dress nice and I like nice things, I like nice shoes and everything. But like, Things like that could definitely shape how you grow and move forward in life and <clears throat> how you move forward basically for the rest of your life. And and then trying to balance that with being what God wants you to be Amen. at the same time. Man. That's probably the hardest thing. Like Sometimes you got to just, sometimes I have to tell myself to like, okay, let me do the right thing because it's the right thing. That's what God wants me to do. No matter whatever, whatever is in my way, whatever is, says otherwise or mm-hmm. opposing me or whatever obstacles in my way when it comes to doing what I'm supposed to be doing. That's why I'm trying to like find that balance of living living my life in this world and living a guy life at the same time, which really you got to be living a guy life all right, the time. Right, all the time. <laughs> right, absolutely. Absolutely. With um being a PK like I didn't grow up being a PK obviously. Yeah, yeah. But you did, you know, so I, I don't really understand the struggle, but 
I see it in my in my little brother, my my younger brother, and my younger sister. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's definitely different. <laughs> it's different, and I I think I encountered something with being a PK one time, and I remember being in uh, I think it was Bible study for the young people, and you know answering questions and you know, um, I'm not the churchy type, you know, so yeah, yeah. I never really felt like oh I'm a PK. You know, because yeah, yeah. I didn't grow up in church, so I don't have church lingo. I have no church lingo. I say I, amen. That's funny because I don't. It's growing up in church, I don't really have it either. Like, right. Because I feel like if I do it, I'm faking it, and I don't right. like faking it. Yeah. I, I hate, like I hate faking. I don't like try to put on the act. Amen. So I just don't do. It. I'm like, hey, I'm like, man, no, I, I was in church today, and they, you know, everybody, was like, yeah, come on, say right. it. I can't, I'm like, I can't, I can't, do, can't it. do it. I can't fake it. And I've always felt like an outsider because <laughs> of that. It's like, hold on, wait, I hold like on. I had to, but I was like. I'm, I'm like, I'm too reserved anyway. That's number one. And number right. two, I don't like faking something I don't really feel right, like I need right. to do. And when I do feel it, I don't feel like that. Yeah. You know, it's like, like, mm, like it's kind of like a motivational yeah. look for me. It's like. I do, but my, my thing is I nod my head. Yeah. 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 My dad That's preaching more good. of an internal thing. Yeah. Right. My dad preaching. And I'm like, I'm like, mm, mm. like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Mm, that's real good, you know, but. I'm not like, you know, praise God. You better preach. No, I don't If I ever did that, that, somebody would look at me like, what's wrong Right, me too. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. Like, Tyree, you're doing that? But nevertheless, I remember being in, in the class and I answered a few questions in a row because no one really wanted to speak up. You know, you know, class environments can be where no one really wants to answer the questions yeah. because they're just tired or people just feel awkward answering questions, you know, in public. And um, one girl stood up and was like, you think you better than everybody mm-hmm. answering all the questions. Hey, da, 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 you're a PK. Hey, da, da. You think you just perfect. And it was like, yo, like you tripping. I'm adopted. <laughs> so for you to say that yeah, yeah. was like wrong person. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I'm not. At the time, I wasn't the amen type. <laughs> I wasn't the amen type. Like, I was the, like, like, yo, don't get out of my face, bro. If I punch you in your jaw, like, yeah, yeah. don't talk to me like that. Like, don't do that. Because I didn't have the qualities of what people call the qualities of a PK, yeah, I yeah. should say. You know, I wasn't, I didn't have that humble, that gentleness, that, and it was a fruit of the spirit. Don't get me wrong, you know, but I didn't have that look of a PK. Yeah. So, for someone to say that to me was like, man, like, nah, I really don't know who I am. Like, it didn't like, help. It just yeah. kept hitting yeah. <laughs> You know, the nail on a cross. Yeah. You know, it didn't help it at all. You know, so yeah, being the PK. <laughs> so we gonna uh, we could probably talk about this for like another two hours or so. But yeah, we are gonna wrap this up. And I'd like to thank my bro Tyree. All right now, coming through. Thanks for having me. No problem. And we'll see you next time. Peace. All right.